Yeah, I thought I'd get this. Uh, this is kind of what you see along the way. You know, they've got a couple of trees down. Um, just to comment on the trail, uh, you know, you, you really should be with somebody or two or three people uh, doing a trail like this. Because, uh, uh, you know, take turns putting one person up front to knock the cobwebs down. <laughs> That's always a... Just let them, you know, well, of course they get the best view of the trail unless you space out. That's what me and uh, my buddy, when we used to go backpacking, he would get way ahead. And uh, we couldn't even see each other, you know, but it gave you that feel of being back there by yourself, even though you had the buddy system going. You know, the thing is, if something did happen, you know, I'm miles from anything, I, I am coming up. Wow, isn't it wonderful that I cut the video on right there? Uh, it's coming up to another kind of road. Wow, that's cool. So, uh, I, I see the orange marker here. That can't possibly be the trail. So, anyway, I'll figure out where the trail's going. It's got to be going down this road. This is the first marker I've seen. That is a weird place to put a, a marker. You know, with this tree here, you could bring a vehicle down this road. Oh, boy. So, but that's the only one I've seen. I don't know. Sometimes the rednecks want to mess with you and, you know, maybe send you off in the wrong direction, but that's all right. I know how to get back. I haven't gone but one direction since we saw that marker on the tree where it didn't look like a trail existed. So, oh yeah, there's a, here's another orange marker. So, yeah, we're on the trail. Okay, good. So, coming down the trail, you see the markers. So, we're getting off of the dirt road. I always try to show you the weird stuff. Somebody, uh... Went through all the trouble of stacking these rocks. Not sure what that's about. I used to see that at Isle Royal to signify a trail this way, but this is this is kind of awesome. But we're heading back into a, what looks like a more uh, another pine forest. And uh, so uh, you know, one big big complaint I have about the Florida Trail. I don't know why they won't do it because I'm I'm reaching the point where I want to stop and eat an apple and uh, get some water out of my backpack and. Uh, it just would be really, really nice if they'd throw a picnic table or two along the trail, you know, in a couple of places, uh, you know, or even put a bench in for you to sit on. But, uh, you know, I understand you, because you, you're way the hell out here, you know, I guess, how would you get it in here, helicopter it in? I mean, you could, we have a lot of helicopters in this area for emergency. Uh, they probably got those slings that you could come down and just lower a, lower some equipment down to some trail maintenance or rangers you know and uh it wouldn't take them all that long to to get it put up and you know have a have it there and uh i know that's a lot of fuel to get a doggone picnic table in here but you know it'd be, be nice i just spend you know one day's worth of fuel i bet you could get 50 picnic tables along this trail you know and then they could triangulate that's what i've been told you know when you have signal that is on the on the cell phones so, oh, that was a story uh, in and of itself. Uh, there was a guy uh, out on a trail, and uh, I don't know what happened. He hurt himself or something. And, uh, and I didn't realize this, you know, they talked about the rescue. And what they can do now, because of technology, is uh, they uh, take those drones. And they triangulate in with the drones to find them. And, uh, and, then, they, and then, of course, the, uh, the rescue party comes out on on uh, whatever they drop ride i guess at that in particular instance i don't i think it might have been advs and they uh, pick them up and uh, and rescue them and i imagine you can use those drones probably to drop supplies to them you know if it's going to be a while before the rescue party can get out there the problem would be is uh, what i do <laughs> because i'd be willing to venture that i have no signal whatsoever back here and uh so if something did happen i don't even think i could make a phone call for them to triangulate on. Now, you can buy some uh, GPS devices for emergency purposes, and if you press the button, you know, they know you're in a, in a situation, and I probably should get something like that. Now, now, well, I mean, up until this point, I hadn't really done anything that I felt was uh, crazy, you know? And, uh, and even today, you know, this is not that bad, but, you know, I'm so far back in here now, I've been hiking for... Well, I started at 1.30 and we're approaching 3 o'clock. So I'm a good hour and a half back into the Ocala Forest. Uh, luckily, it's been a fairly easy hike so far. 
Um, but, uh, you know, it is kind of scary because, you know, it's one thing to be, you know, 15 minutes, half hour, hell, even 45 minutes away from uh, uh, civilization. It's another when you get to be about two, three hours and you haven't seen a gosh dang thing. <laughs> not, a, not even a picnic table, you know, and uh, and you you know you're way, 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 way off the grid. I, how much further am I going to go on this trail? I don't know. I might uh, go back and, you know, I feel a lot safer on those dirt roads uh, rather than being on a trail like this. But you know what? I mean, I feel justified now. I mean, I equipped heavily for this trip. Oh, something just hissed at me over there. And uh, so, you know, I've got the snake leggings. You know, you can see they could be hiding on the side and strike at my legs. So I feel really safe having those on. You know, I'm, I'm loaded for bear with the backpack. I got the bear spray. So, you know, we're we're pretty styling for this this type of a hike. I knew it was going to get crazy. Uh, I, actually, I was expecting it to be crazier on that other trail than this one. You know, the, the thing is, though, if I don't cross another road, you know, how in the world I'm going to have to come back in here and actually camp to get this portion of the trail in. And, uh, you know, it's a... It's pretty kind of crazy camping out here by yourself because I doubt I could get anybody else to do it with me. But uh, maybe I can get with that uh, trail crew. You can see them coming out into the pine trees here. And I uh, put my name up and, you know, get get with a party. I don't. I like being by myself, obviously, but uh, for something like this, I'd just as soon go with a, maybe another, at least one other person. I would feel totally safe with one other person because then you could be packing, you know, one of you carry the weapon and the other, you know, because it's heavy. And I just take turns carrying it and then camp back here for the night. And it's a lot safer with two people. But you can see once again, I've been miles and miles now. Because uh, I don't know all I got is on this light little pack pack. Because if you're carrying a 60 pound pack, where are you going to camp? You know, you're going to go over into those weeds right there and throw your tent up. I haven't even seen a. a for a while now anyway i haven't seen a good place to throw up a tent and i'll probably come across one uh and a good thing about having your equipment along is you don't have to hike back <laughs> you, know, you get to wherever it is you're going to camp if i see a place to camp i'll get the next video all right well i tell you this makes me feel good because it was a bit of a drive from 314 over to the uh where i ended up parking the motorcycle so we are coming out onto 314 and uh, I know it's going to cross it somewhere. I'm looking what it looks like over here. But uh, I was looking for a place just to sit down. I'm going to go down here and have a little picnic on this little dirt road before I continue on. May turn back at this point. I, let's see what I, I think it's getting to be. Well, somebody dropped a piece of metal off the car. But I think it's getting to be 3, three well, it's not 3 o'clock yet quite yet. But, all right. So I do like to point this out, and I'm glad that we got to another spot, but this would be a great place to park a car or just leave the motorcycle and pick up the trail right here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and have a picnic here and then hike back. And then uh, to get some more exercise, I'll probably just hike down a couple of those dirt roads on the way back just to kind of see where they go. Just have, go down them a quarter mile or half mile. Just enjoy the trip back kind of get off trail a bit i mean i could keep going but uh i just soon come back get the car parked here and the motorcycle really on another day and uh we'll continue on this direction on the florida trail now did, have i seen a good place to have a picnic no that road back there had a huge water spot and of course they build need to build another bridge right here i guess i'll just hold up right here in this little area problem is boy here in florida you sit on the ground and <laughs> there's ants everywhere luckily that's so good so that's why this is cut in is these power lines so yeah we'll come back another day and hit this because now i know where i can park i know where 314a is this would be a good place to continue going this direction eventually i'll get back to that spot where we couldn't hike in in on the trail or just north of uh silver springs so all right i don't see no ants so Let's have an apple. You know, on the way back, it just hit me. Sometimes I just want to come in on a little something. And uh, I, uh, 
coming down here, you know, there was two young guys. They were going on the other side, and they blew right past me, you know, and I, I've kind of learned that, uh, you know, motorcyclists, they, uh, they acknowledge each other a lot of times. And uh, so, you know, I, I kind of waved at them a little bit, and uh, they, didn't even, they didn't even take their hands off the handlebars, man. But I hadn't gone another couple miles, and here comes a guy on Harley, and he's got his hand out waving and greeting, you know, and I just thought that was cool. And then the next motorcycle is an older guy, and he's got his hand out and greeting. So, you know, it kind of makes you feel like you're part of a club, even though I'm on a scooter and I got reflective tape. <laughs> but you know what? That guy that got killed, uh, you know, he didn't have any reflective tape on his. And uh, my wife almost hit a guy on a motorcycle, what is yesterday, I guess, because... He was, he was all in black. He was in, dressed in black and his motorcycle was black and he came out of the guardhouse and she was making a left-hand turn and, you know, so I don't mind having that reflective tape on the motorcycle, but I just wanted to comment on the the club that you feel like you're in, you know, you you feel like you're one, and I was listening, to, oh, what got my, my head started was that progressive uh, commercial about the Half man, half machine, <laughs> motar. I think I love that commercial. Let's be progressive, man. They, sometimes they come out with some really good commercials. All right. So on the way out, you know we stepped over a log. I think I got a picture of it. And uh, I'm on the way back right now. I thought this would be a nice place to take a break, see if we see a gator. So I'm going to sit here and have a snack and drink some water. Just hang out on this bridge over the water, and enjoy myself. But uh, just trying to trying to show you how I'm doing. Real, real wonderful hike. I tell you what, I, you know, we'll get the probably the next video will be when I get back to the uh, car. Although I swear I heard thought I heard something big thumping in the woods over here. So I'm gonna I guess I cut the radio off and everything, and I'm gonna just sit out here and listen for a bit <laughs> before I cross the snuggling bridge. Hey, there went something. I don't know what it was. Hmm. All right. And uh, here's another thing that I do, because I've been stupid. I put all my stuff at the end of the bridge. That way if it falls off, or my stick falls off, it doesn't fall into the water. And, uh, and then I just walk out with the water and my snacks. And uh, and that way, you know, if you drop anything, you're, you're okay. All right. So I thought I'd get the video of me crossing this bridge. Yes, yeah, one thing in Florida, I never... Another thing I don't understand is why... Do they make these out of wood you know i mean i know it's treated wood but uh you know they're just not going to last very long i mean this thing will probably be down this time uh um you know once we get the summer one you know once we last the summer now i haven't heard any big thumping in the woods would i come back and do this by myself maybe i don't know i would prefer this portion of the florida trail to be with someone just because of the long, long, long distance that you go between the roads. Uh, you know, usually uh, I never feel like I'm far from the, the bike trail or far from the you know, the paved bike trail. I'm not talking about uh, the, the mountain bike trails or you crisscrossing the mountain bike trails or, you know, you might even see another human being. But uh, this portion of the Florida Trail, I doubt very often you're going to see anybody. You know, I bet you could hike it 10 times and not see a single person. And, uh, you know, it is kind of scary when you have that loud thump over in the woods. I don't know what it was. Could have been a limb just falling. And that has happened to me, man. I tell you, you get out here and you think, you know, ah, you know, what are the odds of a tree limb falling on my head? <laughs> and then one drops within about 100 yards of you. I mean, it's, it's huge. And, you know, you just hear this loud crash and smash, you know, and, thinking god, god boy 100 yards that direction and it would have fallen right on top of me you know uh and and, and i'm not talking on a well like, usually it's kind of a windy day uh you can see we have no breeze here today but i mean sometimes you know they just fall in, in any moment and uh I, i'm just telling stories because that has happened to me but uh anyway I'll probably be getting the headphones on i am trying to make a lot of noise let any bears or anything know i'm coming uh, you know, I'm whistling and mumbling to them. You know, people wonder, hey, Kirk, why do you talk to yourself so much? Well, <laughs> you know, a lot of times it's because I want to make noise because I'm out in the forest and talking to myself. It, well, I keep, I, I'm my own best company, you know. 
So, uh, but yeah, I, I'd, if I come back, I'll try to get somebody to come. Well, it is really, really an awesome section. You know, and that's another problem here in Florida. I know this video is getting too long. Was, uh, and that's why I like having the snake leggings here. Uh, you get, we're getting later and later into the season. And uh, no way, no way you could hike this, I don't think. Well, I mean, you could, you could do it if you dress properly. You can do it in the summertime. But uh, there was a portion of the Florida Trail that I did. And I did not have the snake leggings on. I didn't even own them back then, you know. And I just, I do believe I had the long pants on. But somehow they got underneath those boot blouses and the chiggers. Man, they had, they got all around my ankle. And they just bit down there. And uh, I don't know if they were underneath the skin or what. I was putting on, uh, you know, fingernail polish and everything else. And uh, I mean, the scars from those critters lasted for months. Now, granted, I'm old and I'm not healing the way I used to, but uh, it just was unbelievable how long the scars lasted. All right, let's, uh, I'll be quiet there and we'll get one more back at the motorcycle, unless uh, another loud thump in the woods and then I will cut this thing on. Uh, here's a sign that I did not notice on the way out. Huh. Huh. Well, I don't know what Maybe this is a parking area here, going that way. Because uh, I don't know what the orange arrow means. And then you got the north-south sign here. I know I didn't come down. I don't think I came down that. All right, I'm, I'm a little bit... I mean, the orange markers... I'm going to follow it this way. Hopefully I didn't make a wrong turn. I don't remember hiking underneath those, those power lines. So, um, but the, uh, I wouldn't wonder, well, I guess it's just showing you the, but obviously you can come down that from somewhere and this would be a nice hike to come back. I'm going to go a ways up there. Let's go see what's up there. Well, I hiked up that side trail and this answers a whole bunch of questions. They actually put this here and they, uh, they blew it up. Let me get my walking stick because that's a better pointer. I'm going to guess we got on the trail Got a bug on me, sorry. We got on the trail here at six, okay? I'm just guessing. And uh, boy, this bug is really after me. <sighs> I'll tell you what, I'll just uh, put the stick aside. Now it says that we are here at the Eaton Creek Trailhead and this is FR, well maybe FR 67 or Northeast 52 place. Well that, okay, we hiked over to CR 314. So the next hike, like I said, what we could do I'll have to see if there's a parking area here at 3 on 40. And uh, this is the section we've been trying to do. Here's the Marshall Swamp Trailhead. And we've been trying, I've luckily a bug went away. Let me use my pointer. So we're trying to get from here up to 40, which doesn't look that long. And then, uh, and it looks like it goes down 40 a ways and then you pick up at 3. So I'm gonna ride down 40 we're going to come down 314 on the motorcycle and then I'm going to make a left and see if I can find that trailhead right there. And if there's a parking area, that would be a good place to park. And then hike from here over to either here or over to here. But that looks like a long hike right there. Because I'm going to tell you what, just getting from 6 over to, uh, well, 314A, I'm worn out, man. And I don't that that doesn't look like squat. And then you 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 will want to park here where we parked today, and try to get up to here, which is going to get you to CR 316. But I bet that's going to be a long hike. That'd be a good good day back and forth. So that uh, so we're getting there. You know we're getting north on the on the trail. This is the section that I'm not sure how to get because I can't get through it. I've tried twice now. And uh, I don't know about from three to five, but uh, we'll go ahead and just finish it up today. But I'm glad I got to see this because this really, uh, it's really answered a lot of questions. Uh, Eaton Creek section, let's just read the sign. This section of the Florida National Scenic Trail runs from the beginning of the east-west junction in the Ocala National Forest to the Sharps Ferry Bridge on 314 near Marshall Swamp. The section north of here to east-west junction will be maintained 
and is in good shape. The section south is maintained less often and includes some sections that may be seasonably underwater. Yeah, we found that out. <laughs> so, so at least going further north, it's going to be good. Uh, we'll just have to wait for a long dry season to get this section from here to here knocked out up to 40. And we'll see if there's a parking area today right there. All right, let's get back on the trail. Okay, because this is going to be two videos, I wanted to make a summary of the hike today. We're going to come back and we'll continue this way but what I want to find is that 40 entrance and do the section coming up and then maybe next year we'll get the section between uh, 40 and Marshall Swamp because it's just uh, too much water I even pointed that out and that sign told us this is going to be a well-maintained trail easy hike um, my summary of this portion so you remember I said you could come down this dirt road and park your car right here uh, do you need snake leggings not really I mean you know those there were some tight portions of the trail where you know if one was right off the side you might you might scare him out and he's gonna lunge out and uh, you definitely would want in my mind long pants because uh, the limbs and the bushes were scraping on my legs a bit but you could get away with shorts uh, was it beautiful absolutely gorgeous uh, even the dirt roads I didn't mind you know and I call them dirt roads uh, not like this I mean they weren't you know like a road like this they were just ne somewhat narrow you get an ADV down them um, so uh, yeah yeah I think if you want to hike a portion of the Florida Trail and, and be all by yourself and uh, you know and I would just bring some sort of protection maybe a handgun or yeah, some bear spray uh, that'd be all you need you know and uh, I never saw any animals, not not even birds, really. So if you're a birder, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> going down that trail to to look at birds. Um, so I, I I liked it a lot. I really I, I'll definitely be coming back here from time to time, um, doing it. Uh, it's just a bit of a haul. If you didn't have a motorcycle like I do, getting 100 miles to the gallon, you know this is a this is a long ways from our house. And I wasn't intending to come this far, and I got a long ride back, but. This is the portion of the day that I like. I'm going to have a snack at the at the motorcycle, drink some water, uh, maybe chill out and have a, I got a cold beer in there. I think I'll just have one because I am tired, but man, it, probably that alcohol will hit me just a little bit, just enough to take the edge off. And uh, boy, what a perfect day. Um, am I going to do any more hiking today? Nah, I'm done. I might, uh, hopefully if I get home early enough, I can get the uh, paint protect on my wife's car and that just about finishes her car up uh, you know I've been talking about the detail in the cars in previous videos and you know I won't go into to all of that but uh, it's real important you do that about twice a year and, and I don't know I drop the spare once a year I don't do that and I do rotate the tires twice a year but you pay you know you know what you pay for I paid for that contract at Firestone so it's free for me and usually I just have them check the alignment depends on how many miles if it's been about 7,000, 10,000 miles, I check the alignment. Anything in between that, I, I don't worry about it. I mean, it's free, but I don't want to waste Firestone's time. All right, man, so that's uh, kind of finishing it up. Let's hope that uh, I see the motorcycle at some point. Um, I didn't remember how far I hiked down this road, <laughs> but I guess, guess it was a ways. And uh, well, so until next time, peace out. Boy, I was getting worried. <laughs> I kept thinking, wow, where is the motorcycle? Because you couldn't see it. I got it so far back in there. That was good. I forgot one last detail. Gosh dang it. I hate putting all these clips together. It's going to take forever. But uh, I wanted to give you the length of the hike. It took me about, um, well, I got on it between 1 and 1.30, I believe. And uh, it's between uh, 4 and 4.30. So you do the uh, two to three hours, I'd say, depending on how fast you go. I did take uh, two short breaks, uh, didn't even sit down, and uh, so you got to add that into the, the time, you know. So anyway, let's get on our chariot and ride to the, see if I can find those parking areas. So this is what it looks like just off of 40. You can see this is a main road. We wouldn't want to leave the motorcycle just sitting here. I'm just going to walk in a ways and see. Whoa, I'm a little wobbly after that hike, but uh, I just want to kind of just take a quick look. So this is what it would look like coming from the other side. 
and uh, I don't know I don't know how far you could get going this way on the trail and then uh, so what you what I want to do next I guess is park up on 314A and uh, you see I'm on service route 40 so uh, anyway let me see Ooh, I wish I wasn't so wobbly oh man oh. Ah, there we go let's see if we can get across 314 or 40 here we go all right so coming from this direction coming from 314 to right here might just work I'm looking at it at it's still pretty thick in there but there's no I, I'm real bummed man I would have loved to have been able to just park here but there's no parking area all right so uh, I guess the next section maybe we'll we'll try that and uh, and then we'll just leave the other section behind us and then just keep going north